Hey, it's Dennis with Cybercraft. Today I'm going to be going through another Security Plus performance based question. This one I haven't looked at before. I had my team make it for me. Let's see what it is. I'm going to jump right into it. Hopefully, I get all the answers correct. Let's take a look. So, this one's on host intrusion analysis. Uh, it says we're a lead cybersecurity analyst for mid sized enterprise, currently working to strengthify, strengthen our overall defense strategy. I think I said strengthify. While this company maintains a mix of baseline security controls, such as antivirus software, web filtering, VPN protections, routine patching, several gaps in awareness, authentication, and removable media policies remain. Recently, these weaknesses have been repeatedly exploited by attackers through different methods. Some incidents began with phishing emails, disguised as trusted internal messages, while others leveraged poorly secured accounts with the unsafe use of removable drivers. In each case, the adversaries pursued clear objectives, harvesting employee credentials, establishing persistence when compromised within compromised systems exfiltrating sensitive files or deploying ransomware disrupt operations your task is analyze these incidents map attacker techniques to your team's threat taxonomy and to identify where the organization's security posture failed providing actual insights for reducing risk okay so very wordy but it looks like we have to do a couple tasks and basically we can just summarize all this our task is to analyze uh the technique identify where our posture failed and then provide insights on risk. Okay, so let's go through here. So here's our situation. Organization security posture around authentication is weak as user accounts rely on simple short passwords with no multi-factor authentication is in place. This makes accounts highly vulnerable to brute force attacks or credentialing stuffing attempts. The risk materializes when an attacker begins repeatedly attempting to log in using a pre-compiled password list. Without additional authentication controls or sufficient password complexity requirements, the attacker has a strong chance of eventually breaking the account. Primary objective is to gain access to sensitive files stored within the environment and exfiltrate that data for malicious use. Okay, so we have to basically pick what type of attack this is. So Credential attack, brute force, social engineering, removable media attack, or insider threat. Well, it's a credential attack. Now, it'd be, I guess, a brute force attack since we're trying multiple passwords. Credential stuffing. That makes sense. And normally this would be done using bots. So, you know, bots would be trying to log into these using credentials that are easily used or commonly used. Password guessing, unauthorized access data, and exfiltration. That's exactly what this is. It says exfiltrate data, and it says that they're using multiple passwords to try and guess them. So that's definitely the first one. Uh, let's just make sure by taking a look at the other ones. It's not social engineering. It's not a removable media attack. It's not insider threat. So it has to be this one. Okay. All right, so let's see. Next scenario. Company currently maintains a moderate security posture relying on standard antivirus software and web filters to block common threats. However, user awareness remains a weak spot as employees receive only minimal training on recognizing phishing attempts. This gap in preparation recently became evident when a user clicked on an email disguised as internal discount program. By interacting with a malicious offer, the user inadvertently provided an opening for the attacker. The adversary's objective is clear, to capture users' credentials and quietly monitor activity, leveraging compromise account for potential lateral movement across the network. So we're basically just picking the multiple choice that best describes this. Okay, so we're going to start with the first one, user awareness. So it's going to be some sort of phishing attempt click. So social engineering. And it's phishing, so it's going to be a phishing email. And it's a malicious link, malicious link, and then credential step. They steal the credentials. Yeah, capture users' credentials. So really, this is, describes it right here. It's not. It's not really mal. Well, I guess it is, would be malware, but it's not a USB drive. It's not file sharing. It's not a physical attack. So it has to be the last one. These are pretty easy, I have to say. Let's keep this trend up. All right. The company's overall security posture is fairly up to date with systems kept current through regular patching. However, removable media is still permitted within the environment, though auto run features have been disabled as a precaution. This policy gap was recently exploited when a user returning from a conference discovered an unfamiliar USB stick and inserted it into their workstation to transfer a presentation file. 
an unfamiliar USB stick. You don't want to be just picking USB sticks up off the ground. Uh, don't do that. All right, by doing so, the user unknowingly introduced a potential threat vector into the organization. The, uh, <laughs> the attacker's objective is twofold. First, to establish persistence on the compromised proceed machine and exfiltrate sensitive project files, and second, potentially escalate the attack by encrypting host data for ransom. Okay, so it's a ransomware attack and data exfiltration. So it could be like a double exploitation where they're you know, going to steal your data, threaten to release that data, and then also encrypt your data and do a ransomware attack. So it's going to be a USB. We're going to look for USB here. Insider threat file sharing data upload data exfiltration. Possibly. Physical attack, stolen laptop, direct access, now service. That's not it. Removable media attack. Okay. This is it. Inf infected USB device, manual file execution, persistence, and ransomware. Okay, that's it right there. Social engineering, phishing, malicious credential theft. So it's going to be this one here just because it, it matches all of the aspects here. Unfamiliar USB stick. You don't want to be pulling up an unfamiliar USB stick. You only want to trust USB sticks from Cybercraft. That's, those are the only ones you want to trust. No, but I, I think it's this one. And these are pretty simple. We're looking for what matches from the paragraph into the multiple choice. So I think these are all going to be in the same type of scenario. Let's go through this one. The organization maintains a strong overall baseline security posture supported by encrypted virtual private network access and routine patching across all workstations. However, a major gap exists in the handling of removable media since users are still permitted to plug in external USB drives without centralized oversight or scanning requirements. This weakness was exploited when an employee returning from a public conference connected an old USB device to their workstation to transfer a report. Unknown to the user, malicious code was executed immediately upon connection. Okay. Because it was an old USB device. The attacker's objective is to deploy ransomware, encrypting high-value data across the host and demanding payment to restore access. Okay. I have some critiques about this question. I mean, ransomware is going to indiscriminately encrypt files. So it's not going to encrypt necessarily high value data and the organization should just probably disable removable media if you're you know on all sensitive systems on sensitive on systems of a certain security baseline like monitor to high systems removable media is just disabled on those devices but anyway uh we're gonna look for infected usb drive it's right here and then let's see so it has to be that one that's, a, that's all I'm going to do. Most of the time, I recommend reading the question, reading the answers, reading the question again. But if only one of these has removed as a USB drive or mentions USB drive, it has to be this one. So I'm not going to waste time going through the other ones. And a lot of times when I do these questions, I really slow down to give you guys an idea of my thought process. But on these, since they're very straightforward, that would be my thought process. Which one has USB? It has to have USB. If it doesn't, I'm not going to bother with it. Organization invests in user training to improve phishing awareness, but a reoccurring weakness remains. Employees still occasionally click on links without fully, fully verifying the center. Well, everybody's going to do that. Any organization is going to have that weakness. This vulnerability is exploited when an employee receives an email that fears to come from IT support, requesting that they verify their account through the provide link. That's a pretty common phishing email. Believing the request to be legitimate, the employee is, is at risk of entering their login credentials into a malicious site. The attacker's objective is straightforward to capture employees' credentials and use them for unauthorized access to the organization's systems. Okay, this is a very realistic scenario. So this is going to be phishing. We're, first off, we're going to look for the answers that have phishing in them. Uh, social engineering phishing email. This is the only one that mentions phishing, so it's this one. It also says credential theft here, phishing email, social engineering, malicious link. All of that matches. None of the others mention phishing. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, I guess we're done. All right, we got all the answers correct. Okay, pretty simple question. Not a bad one. Uh, it does really kind of challenge us to, you know, read those questions. And I think this is a good one to practice one. This is going to be on our site. Um, but it's a good practice through the CompTIA questions. CompTIA questions, the performance-based questions, often you have you read a very long scenario and then distill that to key pieces of information, which is exactly what we had to do here. 
So as far as practice questions go, I think this is pretty decent, a pretty good way to help prepare you for the actual test. Because a lot of those, in the CompT exams, you're gonna have to take a paragraph like this and you're gonna have to basically figure out what's important in that paragraph, those key words, those key phrases, pick those out and then relate those to the answers. So good job to the team. Thank you uh, to my team for making this. And if you're looking for more performance-based questions, you need help with your Security Plus, don't hesitate. Go to cybercrafttraining.com. Cybercraft we have practice quizzes. We have my video course. If you like my videos here, you'll love my video course. I teach you everything you need to know for your Security Plus exam. We also offer the official CompTIA course materials as well, discounted exam vouchers. Don't forget you get a discount on any exam voucher when you go to cybercrafttraining.com. So save some money on your test attempt. Yeah, lots of, lots of materials for you. But I hope you had a great time watching this video. Thanks so much and have a great day.